listening. All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is the second part of the series on relationship and marriage. If you um, already listened to the first one, or if you haven't listened to the first one, I would advise that you go back to my YouTube, ch my YouTube channel, Share Benjamin Agbo on YouTube. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and make sure you subscribe. You can also leave a feedback in the comment se section. Um, do well to put on the notification bell. I'm privileged of God to have my husband here again today. It's a big deal to have him do a video with me. <laughs> a very big deal. Uh, thank you, babe. Um, you're all welcome. So we'll take it up from where we stopped the last time. Um, I could do a brief recap because I'm, okay. I'm burning. It's <laughs> <laughs> burning for me. <laughs> You. Ah, if I'm not burning for Jesus, what am I burning for in this life? <laughs> if you don't get it, forget about it. Um, <laughs> so, so, well, yeah. Over over the week, um, I've had time to really reflect on uh, the sequence that is. The truth is that we believers should have a kind of a scheme, kind of like a curriculum, where we could handle that we can carry that curriculum and give it to any denomination and say if you can raise people this way mm -hmm. we are sure that at the end of the day we know the kind of christian that would come out of that teachings mm -hmm. just like if you go to covenant university or i go to you know uh, federal university of technology mina or i go to another school please, somewhere in the u.s effect. Oh, great effect when we're talking about universities please all right great effect all right uh -huh. if you go to great effect and i go to <laughs> Federal <laughs> University of Technology, Mina, and you graduate with engineering, and I graduate with engineering. When we both apply for a job, the interviewers expect that each school would have certain curriculum that will build you to become an engineer. Your teacher may be different, mm. you're in a different state, you're in a different country, notwithstanding, there is like a general consensus that is acceptable to being an engineer. So also, I feel like it is good that we have a sequential build, a kind of teaching that is, is most surely believed among all of us believers, despite our denominations, despite the country we are in. When it comes to relationship, when it comes to marriage, we should have some foundational things that we all agree upon, that everything, our differences are built upon the unified foundation. Yeah. I feel we should have that. And that's what we wanted to do last week. We started by saying that in the beginning, God. Yeah. God. In the beginning, God. It is always good that when we want to start anything in life, when you go to a new place, when you want to start a new job, when you receive your first fruit in the beginning of your marriage, any beginning should start with the phrase, God. God should be the pillar. God should be the foundation. God should be the he that gives you the go ahead. That when anyone asks you, what are you doing here? Your first answer should be God. Why are you in this relationship? God. Why this God? That both the knowledge that you, 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 you have to you know, start, both the permission you have to start, everything should come from God. And woe to a person or a nation whose ears have been blocked to hear from God. Mm. really woe to that person and so we wanted to start last week by just laying that foundation by going back to genesis to look at how the first family were before the fall mm. what adam was doing before eve came into the picture why god would say it's not good for the man to be alone um what were the things that god did and one of the things i did not say last week and i think i should start there today was that um um, when we read in uh, where we read in somewhere in Genesis, Genesis chapter two. two, yes, yes, <clears throat> verse eighteen. Let me start from verse uh, fifteen. Actually, Genesis chapter two. It said, "Then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it." This was the verse that bothered me through the week. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about, then the Lord God took the man. You know, where God formed the man. Where he formed the man was not where he finally placed the man. Mm. Where he formed the man was not finally where he placed the man. So there were things that God formed in the man that it seemed as if the man did not need those things in that his current location. 
So God was forming the man in view of where the man will be. Mm. And since we are talking about marriage, that is very key. That you don't just prepare, or you don't just build yourself based on your current circumstance. Mm. You build yourself in anticipation for where God will take you. So that's why we said last week that do you want to have the best marriage? Prepare yourself now to be the best. It may not seem that you need this preparation. Mm. You have this. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that at this stage. Why do you read these books? Why do you do this? You don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You don't have anyone that you need to. But you are preparing yourself not just for where you are. Because when God was forming the man, he was forming the man in view of where the man will be. Mm. So there were things he was like, this is a necessity for you. And you were like, I don't have a need for it now. Mm. It's just like, um, for example, when I came to the U.S., uh, there were really no need me doing some of the things I did, like praying. I, I was telling her, sometimes it can be cold out here. And how the only time we could get to pray was 5 a.m. And we just have a bicycle. We we'll ride in the cold to a prayer because you just can't pray in your room. Um, the neighbors would not like that because we Nigerians can pray very loudly. So we will ride in the cold by and just go and stay and pray in a prayer hall somewhere on campus, somewhere off campus. There was no need. I did not see why I was doing that. I was not a pastor. I did not have any place I was preaching. Mm -hmm. Or why are you studying the Bible or reading like this? You don't have any platform that you're teaching anybody. Yeah. Why are you doing this? You don't have any... You're not... There's no reason why you're doing this. But the right, the right pattern is that you prepare based on where God is taking, taking you, you to. And also, for some ladies, when you're looking at men and they're not where they seem to want to be, the question is... How does their preparation, what does it tell you? Yeah. Does it tell you that they are preparing for something more than where, where they, they are, are at yeah. the moment? Yeah. You know, so when you are looking, so they may tell you, I'm not where I used to be, but are they doing anything? Any active thing? Zoom is not being recorded. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Recording in progress. All right. Don't worry, the full recording will be on YouTube. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So, and the Lord God, you know, sorry. No, look at it. Go on. Uh, I just wanted to let that out, especially because yeah. she always addresses the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel Mr. Ayolo too, uh, Mr. Isaac, those of us that are here, and YouTube. those watching on YouTube, nah, so that, uh, so that nah, yes, let let me bring the male perspective to this scene. You know, God dealt with Adam a lot before Eve came into the picture, and we need to learn what was that man. In that fact, man. sorry, before you continue, I would say there are more teachings on relationship towards women than there are for men. Yeah. And then there are a lot of women out there that are single, yearning, you know, they are stable, they are fulfilled, they found purpose, but they, they scarce, it looks like there is scarcity of men in this generation. They are quality and solid men. And then it looks like there is scarcity of men. So... I'm glad that you are you are being intentional. Yeah. We are not just you know uh, <laughs> focusing on the ladies. We want the right men also to hear this thing so that you know. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the the sad truth is that uh, no matter how much a lady prepares, if she marries wrongly to the wrong man, it will be a struggle for yeah. you as a lady. Yes. And that's why I think it's necessary that we. At least put more flashlight on the men and say, yeah, there's a way that we need to do this also. Because even Adam and Eve, when God was, you know, you know, when God created them, it's like there was more light on Adam okay. than on Eve in terms that Adam spent quite some time, you know, before Eve came to the picture. And there's a lot we could learn from that man, Adam. Anyway, that's by the way. I'm trying to say in verse 15 of Genesis chapter 2, the Bible said, then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Ha! I was initially talking about um, how that the place God formed the man, the place that God formed the man was not the place that God finally placed the man. Mm. God did not form the man in Eden. Mm. God formed the man and took the man and placed the man in Eden. And so I was saying that there are certain things that God requires in your formative stage that you may not see the need of them in that your formative stage. Mm. 
we're talking about marriage and so i'll try and relate everything and give examples based on marriage so there are things that it looks like you may not need as a single person but if you are preparing for life in marriage the preparation for those things the equipping of those things should happen while you are still single it is dangerous to start preparing for battle in the middle of battle yeah yeah it is dangerous it is very risky to start looking for what to do when your spouse is angry, when your spouse is angry. Yeah. You know, so there are things that God may require of you. I, I, let me give an instance. There was a time I was reading. I was reading a book. I can't remember what book it was, but um, I learned from that book that I should start adding value to my spouse, even though I had nobody, even she had not even come into the picture then. And so what I decided to do is that I was going to start washing the bathroom every week mm. just so that i start to do that as something that i do just so that i anticipate adding value and where i was living was like in a four bedroom i had one of the bedrooms and three other people had the other three bedrooms and they were not the cleanest of people they, in fact one of them assumed that the bathing water washes the bathroom <laughs> That the water they use in bathing wash it in soapy water, right? It washes the bathroom. <laughs> I didn't care. My mindset was that: what if you get married to someone and the only flaw they have is washing the bathroom? Should that be a major a, a problem? You know, should that be a major problem that I should be comfortable doing something as if she's not there, like? If she was not there, would I allow the bathroom to just be dirty? If she was not there, would I not cook for myself? If she was not there, would I not, you know, clean the room? So I, I had to start to learn how to consciously do those things. Even though at that instant when I was single, we had a roster that rotationed who would clean the bathroom. Now, because he had that value to himself while he was young, me being married to him now is a blessing. I can say... Since we got married, it's almost a, I'm, I'm not doing, uh, it's not something I'm proud of, but <laughs> I must say that since we got married, I probably had washed bathroom maybe once or twice. I'm telling you, not because I'm lazy. There are other things I do that I does not do. Hello? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there are other things that I do that he does not do, but I'm glad that I married a clean man. Because right way before I got married too, I remember I, li I lived alone for a long time before I got married. And uh, one of the things I don't joke with was washing of the bathroom. Like there was a time when I was too busy or too tired to do it. I would employ someone that would come and clean the house. See, your single season is a preparation season. It's a preparatory phase for your future. And don't just do it for the sake of who you are going to get married to. Let it be a lifestyle that you cultivate. There are some of us now, even single ladies, your bed, if we say, show us the picture of your room, <laughs> you can't show us. Show us a picture of your kitchen, place for the past one week. You know, um, if the Lord should do, should do an x-ray of your underwear right now, <coughs> the whole world we. We have to fast and pray for it. Now, what, what I said, I said that to say that he developed that. He added value to himself as a young man. Now, being married to him is a blessing because um, he helps with the choice. He doesn't see the choice as what a woman should ordinarily do alone. So, there are times he just, every weekend, I mean, I'm telling you, another thing, since we got married, my husband does laundry almost every week. I haven't done laundry once since we got married. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm not saying that I am lazy. <laughs> I am saying that there's a way a man can add value to himself, and the future it, your your spouse will benefit yeah. from it later in the yes. future. Imagine if he was a dirty man and all, I would have been frustrated. I would have been frustrated because even if he does not do it, these things, I will have to do because I can't stand a dirty environment. I can't stand a dirty bathroom. I can't stand. In fact, when I remember when I was single and people were living with me, we had to. It's something that everybody had to learn. They we had to take it up as responsibility. They they had to take it up as a responsibility, like a roster every. I think every week or so. So there has to be that personal preparation you are doing you are actively engaged in as a single person be intentional 
build value for the sake of the future it is very 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 important. don't pile up clothes for one month all in the name of i'm busy i do nine to five don't pile up don't be comfortable with that a dirty environment don't leave your bed unlaid <laughs> don't i mean don't leave your dirty dishes for long in the in the kitchen it's very very important yeah then, then yes thank you for that so there are things that god may require there are things that you should form in your formative stage that you may not see the need of them in that your current stage yeah but you are preparing yourself for what you believe god has prepared for you yes. so god formed the man and then he took the man from where he formed the man and placed the man in eden and theologians like this can tell you the implications of what eden means eden means the presence of god but i don't want to go into that because that would take me long. I, I remember something uh, still about what we're saying Mm -hmm. One of the things that I appreciate about my husband before we got married, he was, I, I, I remember sharing it before on my social media post that he's a one socks, one day kind of man. Some men, if they enter a room and they remove <laughs> their shoes, hey, the fragrance of my worship <laughs> rose up to, the, first it was fragrance, <laughs> then it turned to fire. Like, you literally cannot stand the room. You come back from work, you drop your shirt on the chair, your boxer on, in the, on the dining area. Like, be, as in, like, there's a way you can develop yourself, yeah. physically, emotionally, spiritually. Last week, we focused on spiritual growth a lot. Yeah. But I want to believe, see, I yeah. believe strongly that spiritual development is not the only de de yes. the preparation you need for marriage. There are a lot of things you need to develop. A lot of people lack, um financial stability even as singles you just spend any hour and anyhow and you're going to you know bring another person into that state of confusion if you don't learn how to manage your finances properly you know physical development one boxer one day please boxer is not meant to be used for more than two days that's what <laughs> <It's I'm>... hidden <laughs> so people don't see so. <laughs> so people tend to you know there are some ladies and um, they will just be that one black bra that one black bra they can wear for two weeks in a row. One black bra. Please, forgive the bra. Let it go. I mean, these things are not expensive. What you spend on data sometimes is, is more compared to what you will use to change your wardrobe. We beg you in the name of God. Add mm. value for you. No, just see, you're going to bring another person into that state of confusion. And it can make a woman frustrated. Or even a guy. Yes, a guy can be very frustrated. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, can I continue? Yeah, please. Yes. Quiet. So, so God took the man. Yes. Don't yes. make them jealous. There is great grace is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at us. Anyways, so God took the man that He had formed. The question as a man is, have you been formed? Hmm. You know, there's a sticker I saw at at, at, at a doorpost. It said, "Can God trust you so much so that He can entrust a life to you as a man?" God can only trust someone that he himself has formed. Mm. So God took the man that he had formed. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we're like, God, use me. God, use me. Sometimes what God is saying is that I've placed people around you that will help form you. Mm. When God was, oh God, so many doors are opening. When the temple of Solomon was being built, the Bible says not a noise, not a sound was heard on that temple site. All the stones were hewn at a quarry site. Hmm. So they were preformed, they were pre-measured. The site of manifestation was not the site of formation. Hmm. And so if you are saying, when will I manifest? God is saying, have you subjected yourself to formation? Before marriage, listen, take advantage of this single season to form yourself. Yeah, your single season is If you don't know speech. how to pray as a single, it will take extra grace to know how to pray as a married person. Mm -hmm. So if this is the time, let your greatest stretch of prayers be now. Yeah. Let your greatest study time be now. Yeah. God will only take the person, the man that he has formed. Mm -hmm. Have you been formed? Have you prepared yourself for marriage? Mm -hmm. These are not the season where, see, let me tell you, if your marriage fails, it doesn't change God. God is still God. Mm -hmm. It is in your best interest for your marriage to work. Yeah. It does not make God a liar mm -hmm. if your marriage fails. So you have to arm yourself with this ideology that I want to be formed. Mm -hmm. 
there are things you may have learned from your immediate family, your parents or your relatives around you that are not the best for marriage. Yeah. Some of our mothers and our aunties, they just stayed in a marriage because they don't have any other place to go to. If they, if they were in America where divorce <laughs> is a thing, they would have divorced our fathers <laughs> and our uncles. I'm just saying yeah. that theirs is not the pattern for godly marriage. So some of these things need to be cut off, just like those hewing stones. They need to be chiseled off. Okay, yeah. let me go now. When God took the man and placed the man in Eden, God gave him an instruction. Mm. He says, tend the garden and keep okay. it. So those are the two things I will say and then I will allow her. Tend. Tending and keeping is an instruction that came before Eve came. Mm. Brothers, this is the crux of my conversation tonight. Tending and keeping. Now, when the Bible, when God told Adam to tend the garden, it brought up something that made me just imagine that what God created, what God creates is not perfect. It is good. Mm. When you say something is perfect, it means it does not have the capacity to be improved upon. It's perfect. Mm. But when God said, I need you to tend the garden, it means that it is good, but it can be made better. Better. Wow. And if it can be made better, it means it can go worse. Mm. So if you don't tend the garden, even though it was God that created the garden, mm. just like even though it may be God that brings the woman, mm. or God that gives you the children, mm. or God that gives you the best, if you have not cultivated a habit of tending, you will still make that thing that Less was initially good to, to decay. Yeah. And so you need to learn to tend. And, and what is tending? Tending means pruning. It's an agricultural term. It means, it means cutting off certain excesses. It means, you know, weeding. It, it, tending is more like, like you are removing more than you are adding. Mm. Even though you were already in Eden. Mm. In because it is possible that there are people that are at ease in Zion. So when the Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm on my holy mountains, I used to wonder why would God be sounding an alarm in God's holy mountain? Because they are sleepers. There are people that they found their way to Zion. They are not only at ease in Zion, but they are sleeping. Mm -hmm. So there are those that, the Bible says, woe, woe, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. That even though God had formed you, it is possible that now that you are in Eden, you now feel relaxed. Mm. God is saying, learn to tend. And in practical terms, really, tending now, how do you handle the things God has given to you? Mm. How do you handle your finances? Mm. If God gives you anything, does it go from, from 10 to 0? Mm. How do you tend? How do you tend? How do you tend? What do you do? And this is the time. Build yourself. Read books. Grow. Cut off things from your life. Really, cut off things from your life. I'm so glad <laughs> that I was not this movie person before I got married. <laughs> because now I'm sure my wife is looking at me like, this guy lost movie now. I did not do like this before. If I was this movie person before I got married, I would not be who I am now. Mm, it would have been a major distraction. Um, okay, so what he's indirectly saying is that your single season is your formative stage. Your single season is your formative stage. Don't just live life anyhow. Make sure you are actively developing and preparing yourself for your future. When I was single by the grace of God, I mean, I used to say it. Even if I'm still not married now, I will still be fulfilled. If I'm still not married in the next 10 years, grace stay with us, I will still be fulfilled. You know why? I was single and I was fulfilled. Fulfillment does not come from being married. I need to say that. Fulfillment does not come from being married. Marriage won't bring you fulfillment. Marriage won't make you happy suddenly. Marriage won't make you purposeful suddenly. If you have not actively developed yourself in your single season to know the Lord, to pursue purpose, to be established in the call of God upon your life, those things may be difficult by the time you get married. And I'll still encourage you to get my first book, Single Called and Fulfilled. It's a book on purpose, how my journey of purpose as a single lady. And it's not, um, it's not a gender-based book. It's a book on purpose. So I believe it's, um, it's going to bless a lot of guys too. 
it has blessed many and is still blessing many. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you, make sure you find purpose. Now, another thing to know about your single season, uh, your single season is not the time to wait to be married. So people say, oh, I'm, I'm seeing, like they, they are not just content with this season of their lives. They can't do without being in a relationship. They break off from a guy, they are better than another guy. They can't stay being single because they feel being single is a curse. Please, your singleness is a blessing. Your single season is a blessing. Be satisfied, be content, live life, enjoy it. Don't wait for somebody to take you out on a date. Take yourself out. You can buy your first car. You can build a career. You can find purpose. You can be single, content, and satisfied. You understand? I responded to the call of God as a single person. So even if I'm still not married now, I will still be focused on purpose. God just brought me into marriage so that marriage can aid the fulfillment of my purpose, not to stop it. I wasn't looking for happiness by you know, getting married to someone. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Um, uh, what I want to say today, I, I really want us to move beyond, you know, those that are single to, you know. Can, can I finish that? Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> yes. So, thank you. So, um, where I was reading in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, so the instructions were, was to tend it and to keep it. So, tending, I was saying, is that tending means that, that whatever God is telling you to tend has the capacity of decaying. If you don't handle it well, I remember last week I said something that that um, getting it right is only the first rung on the ladder of a successful marriage. Yeah. So if God has brought you to Eden, God still expects you to walk in Eden to yeah. keep what he has given to you. And so how do you handle your mother? How do you treat your sister? How do you treat sisters in church as a brother? Before marriage, before the one comes, how do you help these people to grow? How? How? Sometimes God places us around the people he places us around to help or at least test that ability. Yeah. To at least test that, you know, fatherly nature, that husband nature to help groom them, to but help build them. But it's not saying that you should go and be husbanding everybody <laughs> in the name of trying to keep <laughs> at men. That's not what he's saying, you know. Before some reason, you know, I'm, 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 God has brought you into my... Because some people can be set up this and say, you know, I'm, I'm your father. God has brought you into my life. And then they start taking advantage of the no, girls up and down. No. no, that's not what he's that's saying. That's not what I mean. God will bring you into supernatural relationships. It can be even in your unit in church. It can be amongst your colleagues. I mean, like supernatural relationship where you can actively develop yourself. Like even a role at church or a role here as a connect group leader. And how do you tend manage it? People, how yeah. do you manage? What do you do? Do you pray for them? And the other term God used was after tending is to keep it. And this is where, this is where we fought and mostly as men keeping. Keeping, it's a, it's, it's a security term. It's like guarding. Mm -hmm. Because whether you know it or not, there is someone always around the perimeter that runs to and fro. That you need to keep what God has given to you. That even when you tend it, there are foxes that do not obey the laws of nature. I'm trying to say that when you have tended your garden, right? And you've done all that nature demands, you've trimmed it, there are still external factors like foxes, like Satan, that's what I'm trying to say, that it has the capacity to come in and still destroy what you're doing. So you need to learn to be a priest. That's what I'm saying. You need to learn to keep, to guard, to pray. Brothers, I know she, on, I don't know if she knows, notices this, but she sometimes unknowingly just addresses the ladies. You know, so I'm just saying deliberately, brothers, let yes. us learn. Yeah. Guys, let us learn to keep what God has given to us. See, take authority. You may not even, you may be the last born as a boy. You may be the second. You may have so many brothers that are older than you. You may have, take the responsibility for your life to cultivate the habit of being a priest. Keep, that was God's instruction to Adam. That was his instruction to Adam. His first instructions were learn to tend, learn to keep, learn to tend. Even when you are in Eden, you think all is going well, learn to keep. Form that habit of prayer. 
That's when, 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 when Jesus would take James, Peter, and John to the mountain. They did not see the reason why they should pray. We have this Jesus. He would defend us. He would multiply the food. He would bring money out of the mouth of fish. There is no need for us to... Now is the time when you are in Eden. Don't wait till you are thrown out of Eden to learn how to, to tend and to keep. Don't wait till you are thrown into a fiery situation to learn how to pray. Now that you are in Eden, now that you, are, you have God on your side, now you've learned how to hear God, continue in that step. Keep your garden. Guard it. Protect it. Shield it. Take charge over the health of your family. Take charge over the, the, the situation of the business of your family. Take charge over your own life. Learn to keep it. It is after these things that we can say, okay, you are ready. This is the man in verse 15, in verse 17. Uh, verse 16 rather, right? Verse 18. This is the man that should not be alone. A man that has learned how to, tre- to, 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 to keep the garden and how to tend the garden. All right. Thank you for that. So today I, I, I would like us to really address some people in relationship and some of the challenges people in relationship have. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, maybe there are some questions I would ask you and uh, I'd like you to provide answers. Um, The very first thing I want to say is that in choosing who to marry, make sure you involve your spiritual authority. If someone (laughs) comes to ask you out now, whether, and as a lady, like I always say, you are are at the receiving end. You are not the one that chooses who to marry. It's a guy that actually decides that this is who I like. You, you, eventually, you make the final choice, but then whether you're a guy or a woman or a, a lady, Make sure you involve your spiritual authority. Make sure you involve your spiritual authority. You know why? Emotions can make you blind. Emotions can make you blind. It can make you, as in, there are things you will not observe about the person. But involving your spiritual authority will give room for legitimate objectivity. Involving your spiritual authorities will give room for legitimate objectivity. So, if a guy wants to date you, but he does not want to be accountable, please run from, run from such a person. Be mentally careful when someone, when you pledge your life to someone who is not accountable. There, there's nobody in his life you can, you know, you can, that can call him to order. There is nobody in his life that can correct him. There is nobody in his life that he can just wake up any money and decide to break up the relationship. He can wake up any morning and decide to divorce the marriage. A man that lacks um, accountability or an authority should not, should not be allowed to have one. Because even in, in the Bible, this, there is hierarchy. Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. Everybody is under the leadership of someone higher. Christ is the head of the church. Bible says God the Father is the head of Christ. The church is head over principalities and every authority has to be under a higher authority. So be careful when someone is asking you for a relationship, but they don't want to be accountable. There are things you will not see when you are in love with someone. There is a saying that love is blind, but uh, there is also another saying that marriage is an eye opener. Because there are things you will not be able to see because your, your sense of judgment can be clouded by your emotions. Your sense of judgment can be clouded by your emotions. And the fact that someone is accountable makes them, you know, it, it, it gives them room to, to treat you specially. There are things he cannot do because he knows that if he messes up, there are people in his life that will report him to. I mean, we used to we, <laughs> we used to have each other with that. Right? I'll report you, like I'll I'll call your mom now and report. I'm not talking about his, you know, biological mother now. I'm talking about uh, our spiritual parent. I'll report you. Uh, as in, we 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 use that to yab each other a lot. Make sure you involve your spiritual authority. And I like to say this now, babe. I, there was a question poll I put up on Instagram yesterday, asking people, do they believe in parental counsel in the choice of who to marry? This is a major issue a lot of people are facing. You like a guy, you like a girl, but your parents are not in support of this relationship or this marriage for a particular reason. 
let me say this if your parents are those that love god because there are some parents that are trying to relieve their own lives through the lives of their children that's why they will say if you are Igbo, you cannot marry yoruba they are trying to relieve their own lives through their children now those can be kind of reasons why people don't believe or trust in parental counsel now, we are going to, I, want, I want us to address some of these things you say okay if you are not from the same tribe you can't marry this guy so how do i handle it now let me say this if god has convinced you concerning it, a person if god has said this is who i want you to marry eh? now and your parents are not in agreement with it i want you to pray very well the same god who gave you the knowledge the same God who brought it into alignment with that person can also bring your folks, your parents, your siblings, your relatives into the same knowledge. But if you are trying to fight a spiritual battle in a carnal way, you are not going to win. Because you don't want to proceed into a marriage and build a future when you don't have both parental blessings. People used to ask me, you know, I am Yoruba. My husband is from Igede. I did not know the tribe existed until <laughs> I met him. <laughs> I'm the one trying to put the, you know, the map of his states on the, a global platform now. Thank God for, I mean, if some of my in-laws are watching this now, I hope they will not be offended. Yeah, I did not know your tribe existed. You know, <laughs> you know, we, we just decided to, you know, help their tribe people. I did not know any, I'm telling you, I did not know the tribe existed until I met him. Now, people used to ask us, don't you guys have issues since you got married and all? And one of the things I used to say, because well, that was one of the um, one of the things people were scared for, for me, while I wanted to marry him. That, oh, you guys are not from the same tribe, you can post an issue in marriage and all that. And then I used to tell people, my husband is not a cultural man. He is a spiritual man. Now, if he's a cultural man, it can be a problem in our marriage. Oh, this is how you are supposed to serve me. This is the kind of place you are supposed to use. This is how they address people in our village. He, he doesn't do that. It does not make him less of an Igede man. In fact, it doesn't make him less of a man. The main standard is the word of God. He is a spiritual man. So our tribe has never been an issue. So when you want to get married to someone and your parents are insisting, now it's not the time to fight your parent because you want to build a future with someone. What you can do is to take it to the place of prayer. God, you told me about this guy. You told me about this lady. Convince my folks. Give them the same revelation, the same conviction you have given me. Your conviction is for you, not for them. So you cannot impose your conviction on them. You have to ask God to give them the same conviction he has given you. You don't, it may take time. You may, you may have to trust God. You may have to stand in faith together. But that conviction must be there. But if you proceed into a marriage without your parental blessing, make sure you are twice as sure before you progress. Because it can pose a, I mean like it can become a problem later in the future. It can, especially if your parents are people that love God. They are not helping you make that decision because they are carnal. Because there are things that they have seen in their experiences that they don't want you to, you know, um, they don't want you to go through. Another thing that um, most, most issues that parents have issues with, another issue that most parents complain about is the financial stability of whoever their children want to get married to. As much as this seems little, it is very important. I remember doing a marriage counseling. There, there were three things they told us could cause issue in marriage. Do you remember them? Yeah. One of it is money. I'm telling you. One of it is money. And that's why as a single, whether you're a guy or a lady, make sure you are financially stable and financially dependent. I'm not saying that you'll be rich so much that you know, you'll be on Forbes list before you get married. No, there are some level of favor you may not even enter into until you get married. Bible says that he that <laughs> found this, finds a wife, finds a good thing, and has obtained favor 
from the I used to hear my husband. <laughs> there are many things in his life now mm-hmm. that when he was single, he did not enjoy. Mm-hmm. So, like, look at this, look at this, look at what this one is, mm-hmm. look at how we have been blessed with mm-hmm. you. Look at how mm-hmm. and your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the favor factor in your life, mm-hmm. accept it. Mm-hmm. There are some dimensions of favor you will not come into until you get married. That's the sincere truth. Because one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. But I'm not saying that you will have all that you need in life before you get married. But then be financially stable enough to take care of yourself and to take care of your spouse. Because even if both of you can suffer, children cannot suffer. Children should not suffer. Financial stability is a major. As a lady, make sure you have a job. I remember when I was younger, one of the things I used to say is that until I'm stable financially, I can't get married. I don't want to. Because I don't want... Because marriage is not an escape route for poverty. That's the reason some ladies are looking for... Fine, not just fine rich, they are looking for handsome, um, handsome tall and rich. The rich part is because they are poor. They are looking for someone <laughs> to take them out of the poverty. It's a very bad mentality. And you can start a business. You can get a job. Be financially stable. Not always looking for somebody to, you know, send your gen 2K in your life. No, please. No, don't be the send your gen 2K generation. Or gen 2K. Or gen 4 gig de- data. Work with your hands. <laughs> Work with your hands. Be diligent enough. I, I enjoyed my single days. So I won't trade it for anything. I'm telling you. I won't trade it for any. I enjoyed my single season. I remember there was a particular birthday. I, I, I wanted to give myself a treasure and I bought a car. Yes, as a single, I wasn't waiting for, you know, a guy that would sweep me off my feet on Valentine's Day. And then it's just, those things are beautiful. I'm not against it. And baby, if you're planning to buy me a car, please don't change your mind. Like, <laughs> if, <laughs> like, those things are sweet and romantic. But I'm saying that as a single person, you can take care of yourself. Financial stability is very, 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 very necessary. He's very, very, very nice. He wasn't very rich when I met him, but God is helping his life now. <laughs> oh, God will forgive you. <laughs> God is, you know, and it was funny because what me I was spending on rent, because rich is relative, actually. What I was spending on rent in one year in Nigeria is what he spends on rent in like one month. Yeah, so rich is relative. What you know, you you have to walk by faith. <laughs> you have to walk by faith. Trust God. You know, God send me the five hundred k, the seven fifty k, and it's not even up to one month rent here. So rich is a just make sure the person. <laughs> the, the, and another thing is that in your single season, make sure you there are some basic things you should know. See, I will encourage people watching on YouTube. If you've not done dynamic discipleship and ministry school, make sure you enroll. There are basic foundational truths for Christian living that you must have, not because you are married, but even as a single person. You must learn how to walk by faith. You must learn how to be led by the Spirit. The first time you will hear God about your relationship, and the first time you will hear God should not be when you want to get married. The first time you want to walk by faith should not be when you are planning a wedding. You can start walking by faith even as a single person, trusting God for your rent, trusting God for your data, trusting God for this, releasing your faith for things, releasing your faith for your health. Release it because life will bring challenges, will pose challenges to you. If you are not solid in your Christian walk, if you don't have a solid Christian foundation, challenges can happen to you. Before you know it, you will think you married wrong. But it's not about the spouse. It's about you and the foundation you have. Because if a small challenge you have, there are many things in less than a year of marriage, there are many things that we've gone through as a couple. That is enough to br- to make some people ask for divorce. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, it has only made us stronger, not weaker. It has only, there are times he is the one that encourages me in faith. There are times I am the one that encourages him in faith. There are things that happen and then you'll be like, even when I was single, life not be like this. I mean, you'll be tempted to think you married the wrong person. 
So foundational truth for Christian living is important. Walking by faith, being led by the Spirit, intimacy with God, you know, all those things are very, very important as a single person. Because you are going to need it by the time you get married. <laughs> One small sickness should shook you in marriage like this. You will think your village people have entered the marriage with you. Before you know you, you, you will... So you start praying in fear. Yeah. So babe, what can you say about the intertribal thing? Yes. Um, so when... Anyway. When it comes to parents' interference um, yeah. in marriage, first thing I want to say is um, it depends on who you have been to your parents. Mm. First. It depends on how they accept what you say when it comes to matters that are really important, like your choices. So the, uh, there's a story of a guy that came to his parents and like, uh, Daddy, you know, God spoke to me that this girl is my wife. And the father was like, ah, <laughs> which day did that one start? <laughs> 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 well, where, where did you start to hear the voice of God? Uh, God does talk to people finish. <laughs> so you, you, you can imagine that the parents, they don't even believe that God can speak, speak to, to him. him. So when he's bringing, say, God said, they're like, when did that one even start? Mm. I'm trying to say, that person would need to first work on himself and prove himself a child of God to his parents mm. first. So for, for some people, that is what has been for so long. That mm. their parents don't even believe that they are genuine Christian enough. Mm. Your parents know what is in your phone. And they know you don't go to church early. They know you don't take the things of God seriously. You never pray. You never read the Bible. How can they believe that God is even speaking to you? So that's one of the major roadblocks sometimes. That even though God is now genuinely speaking to you, your parents don't believe it. You know, the hardest people to convince that you are a child of God or that you are genuine is those of your household. Yeah. It is, it is normal. Yeah. But if you can convince them, then definitely you are real. Yeah. And so if... Uh, you are genuine, right? And yet there is still some form of opposition. Then do what she says you should do. Um, believe it or not, the first time I talked to my dad about Pastor Shaye, my dad said, ah, you're joking. That's why how they knew me, that's why all they knew about me, that's why what you know about Pastor Shaye and all she is, oh my God, she's this, she's that. She's that. My, dad was, <laughs> my dad was like, ah, you're, 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 you're joking. Whatever spec you think you are, <laughs> my dad did not care. My dad believed that his own son is the best that there is out there. Hmm. You understand, right? And that could come with a plus and, and a negative, a, a negative side to it. That nobody will be good enough for for their son or something like that. But then again, I did not fret. I did not bother myself. I, I just like, well, okay. It when the day comes, it will come. Anyway, um, I went to God in prayer and just tell God, convince them that I don't have to be spending time praying about such. There are yeah. kingdom issues to pray about. Even Why, when, when he said he wanted to marry me, my folks too. Maybe later when God permits us. We'll give you the details. Huh? My folks felt that it was a scam. <laughs> they felt it was a scam. Uh, that one touched me. <laughs> that one touched me. I like me. 